welcome to video three of module two. So this particular objective was a good place to kind of re-pick up on um, just because it's the longest objective. And I'm not going to actually work through any mathematical equations in this particular objective, but what I am going to do is introduce the, the concepts, introduce the formulas that you're going to be using, and, and going from there. So well, the objective of itself is calculate the scale of photos using various methods, and we will do the actual calculations in class. So if we know coordinates on the ground and we can see them in the aerial photo, that's what you need in order to do this, comp this version of it. So let's say you've gone out with a GPS unit and you have acquired points that you know where they are and you know that you can see them on the aerial photo. You can use those points to calculate a distance. So to do a distance, you just take the eastings, which would be usually in meters, and the northings, which would also be in meters. And you're going to use Pythagorean's theorem to calculate the distance. So why do we want distance rather than coordinates? Well, coordinates are nice, but when you're looking at trying to find two places with respect to each other, the distance is the best. But it also allows us to be able to calculate the, the scale of the aerial photo. So to do that, that calculation, to find that scale, we take this distance that we just calculated. So these are ground distances, right? So these are ones that you went out and collected with your GPS. So you're going to come back and you're going to find these two points on the actual aerial photo. And as point one has x and y, point two has x and y. So you're going to find those on the aerial photo, identify them. Then you're going to take a ruler and you're going to measure between them. This is really, you know, high tech stuff here. <laughs> so you're going to measure between these two points that you can see, and that is your distance on the photo. Then you've got this distance, which is actually your distance on the ground because you're using real world coordinates for that then you can calculate the aerial photo scale. So I like to look at this in, in terms of like uh, cross multiplying and dividing. If you prefer to rearrange formulas and do it that way, that's fine. If you have another way of doing it, that is fine. But I'm going to introduce you to how I like to look at it. So because we're trying to solve for s, and we're really dealing with two ratios, the cross multiply divide option actually works really well. So we know what the ground distance is from this formula here. We multiply it by one, and then we divide by the distance on the photograph that we measured with our ruler. That answer is gonna give us S. What happens a lot of the times, and many people make this mistake, so you wouldn't be the only one, is that they just calculate this ratio or this value, they take the distance of the photo divided by the distance on the ground, and they give me that as the answer. That is not the answer for a scale. A scale is going to have one, and then, so it has this one, and then it has the S value. So you can't just divide them. You have to only calculate S. So it's two different ratios that we're looking at there. So just kind of as a side note for that. So another way that you can calculate scale is using a map. So if you have access to a map with a scale on it already, that's a different scale than the aerial photo. Maybe they're the same, who knows. But you're going to find that, that they overlap with each other and have, those, have the same area. As, or not maybe not the same area in terms of mathematics, but they cover the same zone on the ground. Then we're going to find two points that we can see on the map, and we're going to find those same two points on the aerial photo. So on the map, we're going to measure the distance on the map. So find those two points and get the distance between them. Then you're going to calculate the ground distance using the scale measurement, the scale formula that we were kind of using before. So this time, m is going to represent map. So you can take the scale and just multiply by the distance that you measured on the map, which is exactly this using cross multiply and divide except m would be in the photo so you would have the scale of the map you multiply it by the scale of the photo or not the photo the map so scale of the map multiply by this 
the distance that you have measured on the map, then you divide by one. So you get this formula here, and that gives you your ground distance. Now, what is really key about this is that once you've calculated the ground distance on that map, does the ground distance change? Of course not, right? Because if I measure the distance from my house to your house, it doesn't change on the ground whether I'm looking at a map or looking at an aerial photo. It doesn't matter what scale of the map or the aerial photo that I'm looking at, that ground distance does not change. It'd be really scary what the world would look like if it changed every single time you looked at a different map. So, so using that as kind of a, as our constant between the two, we can now measure the same two points that we measured before on the aerial photo and get that distance. So now we can try to calculate S by taking the ground distance that we calculated here from the map, multiply it by one, and then divide by the distance on the aerial photo. And that is going to give me my scale, my one colon scale number. And we'll be doing this in class for sure. So another way to calculate scale is the benefit of the like triangles that we work with. So because our triangles, and we're dealing with similar triangles, we can actually use a ratio of the, the negative plane to the focal point with respect to the focal point and the, the flying height above the ground. So that's what this ratio is here. So to find the scale between the two, we can just use that vertical information. So F is my focal length. And h prime, sorry, h prime is the flying height above the Earth's surface. So if we're trying to find the s, we're going to take the flying height, we're going to multiply it by one, and divide it by the focal length of the camera, and then we get our scale measured. So this works really well when you have a flat surface. Unfortunately, our surfaces are not always flat. <laughs> we end up with this issue that we're trying to find distances on our aerial photo and finding out that scale on the ground. So this is where I was talking about how the scale can be different depending on where you are in, in the aerial photo because this variable terrain will change that scale because these are two different measurements completely even though they're the same measurement on the ground. So we're going to account for that when we're doing this math, especially when we're dealing with the vertical, right? We don't have to worry about it horizontally, but we have to worry about it vertically. So now we're, we really want the average elevation. So we need two points. We need the highest point in the aerial photo and the lowest point in the aerial photo. So having some understanding of the aerial photo and what you're looking at is usually very helpful. Google Earth has become really helpful for this, this type of application. So you have your highest point, your highest ground elevation. You add it to the lowest ground elevation. And you divide it by two to get the average between the two. I could give you 20 different points. All you're going to do is look for the highest one and the lowest one and take, take it between that. Because what may, might end up happening is if you're averaging all of them, is that you're actually going to provide bias into your calculation. Because what if I was really interested in the elevation of a certain area, and I took a whole bunch of elevation points in that area, but I didn't account for the rest of the photo. So if we're looking at the entire photo, we need to look at the highest and lowest point, and then divide it by two, and that's it. Don't use any more than those two. If you, use two, if you add them more together, if you put three or four of them, you're going to get a wrong answer. So then we need to know the flying height above the ground, which adds a little bit of complication. Because when we use altimeters in an, area, or in an airplane, we are using a flying height above mean sea level rather than above the ground. Because the ground just changes too much too quickly. So it's easier to use sea list, the sea level value. So in order to determine that, we take that average calculation that we just calculated here, this average elevation, and we're going to take the value from the altimeter that we just calculated. We're going to minus that average elevation. And that's going to give us the flying height above the ground, or above the mean elevation. So if you wanted to put it all together into one big formula, the scale calculation looks like this. 
So we're trying to find the scale. We're going to use the altimeter reading minus our average elevation. Multiply by 1, divide by the focal length. It's really key, especially in this situation, that all of these values are in the same unit. Okay, <laughs> so focal length is often given in millimeters. Elevation is often given in either feet or meters. And the altimeter is also given in feet or meters. So make sure that you have everything in the same unit before you do any of these calculations. So once we calculate scales on a map, we can move into looking at distances and angles at points that we are unsure of and we don't know any, um, we don't know the values of. So, and so how do we do this and how do, does it help? Well, the distances and areas, we just talked about scale, right? So in order to find distances, we can take our, well, I say DM here, but that can be the DP or D photo. So the distances on the ground can be calculated with that scale that you just calculated. And then you measure on your, your aerial photo, this is for your aerial photo, measure on your aerial photo that distance between the two points. You're going to multiply it by the scale and divide by one. And that's going to give you your ground distance. So now we've got distance, pretty straightforward there. Then we can also determine angles between two distances. So you can't get an angle of one, one value. You have to have angles between two values um, or two distances. So unless you're looking for an azimuth or bearing, which is more on the land surveying side of things, um, which is in another course, I'm sure. So angles and bearings would be fine, but or not angles, azimuths and bearings would be a different aspect entirely. That has to do entirely with map projections and stuff. So we're not going to get into that here. We're just looking at an angle between two different distances that you have. So you find the distances between three points. You need to find all three um, distances in that triangle. Okay, so you're going to create a triangle and you're going to calculate the distances, the ground distances of all three sides of that triangle. So you have your known point, you have the two, or like a common point, and then you have your two other points that you're perhaps going to, which are opposite from the angle that you're trying to calculate. And then you can use a cosine law. So it looks very similar to Pyth Pythagorean's theorem, except we have our cos value. Um, so this is already rearranged from the typical cosine law. We have a squared plus b squared minus c squared divided by 2ab. This works for, um, for 90 degree or it works for unknown angles. It works kind of for everything. As long as you have these three sides, then you can calculate the angle that you're aiming for. Now, a and b um, are the other angles that you, or sorry, a and b are the the distances that are connected at the, the angle that you're trying to calculate, and C is at the far end of that, so it's the, uh, the distance that you just calculated because you need to be able to do this formula. So that's one way of doing it. There are other ways of getting angles as well, like if you're using a protractor on there, you can definitely do that. Angles don't change, and that's something that's really important to remember. Even though the map scale changes, the angle does not. Um, it's only if there's some distortion, otherwise angular distortion that would cause a problem. But if you have a like an ortho photo and you've calculated the scale of it and you can measure your distances, that angle is not going to change whether it's on the ground in real life or on the map. It's just a different, all it is, it's just a different part of that angle, right? Like, so on the map, it's very small, and then it gets much bigger in real life. So it doesn't change. There's no scale calculation with angles. It's You just take them as they are. So even if you wanted to, if you didn't want to convert everything to ground distance, you could keep all of these as your aerial photo distances to calculate this angle, because the angle doesn't change. 
So that's just kind of a hint with that. So in class, we'll be doing a lot of these um, calculations in class rather than um, here in this video. But we'll, you'll get lots of practice with that, so no worries. So the last part of this is getting into the visual image interpretation techniques. And um, I'm going to stop the video here and then we'll do a fourth video for this module just so that I can break it up a little bit into the smaller pieces for you guys. So um, I will see you in the next video.